This question kind of highlights one of the biggest challenges we're going to face in the hard reading module is that the question difficulties do not increase as you go, right? We're moving between different types of passages, different types of questions, and the difficulty is all over the place. So you have to get good at, at picking out easy questions. Compared to some of the other ones we just did, number 12, number 11, this is a piece of cake. So let's take a look. Um, we need to uh, support this person's conclusion. So let's take a look at the, uh, the passage first. Let's just kind of get her conclusion out of here. Uh, some climate models for the Western United States predict that while total annual precipitation may remain unchanged from the present level, precipitation will become concentrated into fewer but more intense rain and snow events. University of Texas climate scientist Greta Persaud and her colleagues simulated how the amount of water entering aquifers and the amount being used for irrigation purposes would change if this were to occur. Notice, we haven't gotten to the conclusion yet. Here it is. Persaud and her colleagues concluded that concentration of precipitation into fewer events would result in a higher number of dry days triggering more irrigation, but that this change in irrigation output is highly sensitive to the baseline concentration of precipitation that currently exists in an area. So there's two conclusions. There's one that's very kind of like traditional, right? So um, that we have fewer events, so we're gonna get uh, more dry days and more irrigation. Cool, that's the normal kind of ups and downs we think about. But then it also says that's highly sensitive to the baseline concentration. Now look at the chart. Baseline concentration is one of the columns, right? And look, if we just look at these two sets of numbers, 4.9 versus 11, that seems like a big difference. 0.4 versus 9, that seems like a big difference. 0.9 versus 7.9, that seems like a big difference. So that seems true, right? It, it is highly sensitive, right? Like, I don't know what these numbers mean. I don't, I don't really care. I just know that they're different numbers. So that's sometimes all these things come down to. So uh, basically the row, I'll say, matters, right? Because that's how we're thinking about this um, this chart, right? Is, is that they're telling us that there's two different rows here of data and those rows correspond to the different ways that we can have a baseline concentration. And so each row has a different set of numbers. Some are big, some are small. Let's, let's just look and see what we get here. Uh, a, if baseline precipitation is somewhat concentrated, so somewhat concentrated, the amount of water being used for irrigation will increase 0.4% for surface water. So that seems true and 0.9% for groundwater, that seems true. Whereas the amount of water entering aquifers will increase 11%. No, it's 4.9. So this is why some of these questions about charts and graphs are really easy. It's literally just looking in the right row and column. So that's just factually incorrect. This is false, right, based on our chart. B, if baseline precipitation is somewhat concentrated, water use for irrigation will increase only slightly. Uh, okay, yeah, that seems right. Whereas it will increase 9% for surface water. Nope. And 7.9%, oh, here, 7.9% if baseline precipitation is evenly distributed. Uh, yeah, okay, wait, wait, actually, that's true. I, I misread what it was about to say, right? So for, um, it's if it's somewhat concentrated, it's only slight, right? Because look at these numbers, 0 0.4, 0 0.9, they're very, they're very small. Um, and they're specifically talking about irrigation, so it's the 0.4 right? Um, and then it will increase 9% for surface water and 7.9% for groundwater if baseline precipitation is evenly distributed. That's the other row. So this is comparing basically like the two numbers. So this is telling us that the row matters. If we look at a different row, we're going to get a different set of numbers. So this is actually correct. I thought they were about to talk about a different column in the same row. So this is why you got to read carefully. So I don't know, this seems this seems true. This at least seems accurate. Whether or not that supports our conclusion yet, I don't really know. C, if baseline precipitation is somewhat concentrated, somewhat concentrated, that's the top row. It's hard to fit all this. Uh, da -da -da, the amount of water entering aquifers will increase 4.9%. Yep, that seems right. While the amount being used for irrigation will increase 0.4%. That seems right. Uh, uh, for surface water and 0.9% for groundwater. So that seems right, but notice it's not talking about the two different rows, right? Like if the row matters, but we're only talking about one row, that seems wrong. So this is a good, this I feel like is true. Again, I could be misreading it. Um, the amount of water entering 0.4.9. Yeah, it seems like the right thing, um, but it's just only talking about one row, whereas this is talking about two rows right? One row, two rows. So they're both true, but mm, I don't know. Let's look at D. If baseline precipitation is somewhat concentrated, water used for irrigation will decline by a small amount. No, there's no decline. So done. So 
this sometimes happens with these hard ones, right? So sometimes there are choices we can eliminate because they are false, they're inaccurate, right? So I would say D also falls in that category. They are not matching the data in the chart. But then that's not, in the easy module or the first module, that might be enough to get the question right completely. But in the hard module, there's usually these like two components, right? What's, what's true and false, but also what is like, related to what they're saying. So B is the safer bet because she seems to be saying it's it's based on the, the, the baseline concentration. So we have to look and compare and contrast. C is only talking about one row of this chart. So it's not comparing and contrasting. And and that that literally has nothing to do with me understanding the experiment. It has everything to do with the, the just the idea of like what they said about, you know, like where to look basically. So I do think this is not necessarily like an easy question, but I think it is easier than a lot of the others uh, that we've seen in this kind of group of passages. So you got to target things. Um, the reason I might know that this one is easier is, uh, I don't know, I guess the choices are kind of long, but um, the number, there's not many numbers. So maybe I could go to these numbers really fast and kind of look and check the numbers. Um, I don't know, this, this is tough. This is a tough call if you're trying to figure out what you should target. I don't know if this one looks like it's gonna be much easier than some of the others, but it ends up being that way. So I don't know, do your best, try to feel it out very quickly uh, based on whether or not the passage is hard to understand um, and especially the end, the conclusion part. If that seems pretty straightforward to you, then that might be a good question for you to do.